Alaska? <clears throat> Sicily, Alaska. Sicily, Alaska, but the town was actually in Washington, Correct. up in the uh, mountains. Fratelloni's Hardware. Fratelloni's Hardware and Stores. <laughs> Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic Podcast number 1,266, March 15th, 2024. The St. Patrick's Day weekend. Oh, oh, Jesus. 70 degrees on this day in 2015, and it was seven below on this day in 1897. Hail the flashlight, King. And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers, Manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushi. Anybody know where Finlayson is? Yes. Yeah. Is it up by Duluth? Uh, um, further north, up yeah. Highway 61. Yeah. Well, Andy from Finlayson writes, Hail the Ice Out King. Fin- Finlayson. Finlayson. Yeah. Hail you. And Hail he's, you. he's Hail a little you. sad. Yeah. He's a little sad. How can Ice Outs be over? When we get to April 1st, there will still be years the ice went out on that day, and we need to hear about it. <gasps> he's right. The Ice Outs are an important pushback against climate hysteria. Ice Outs show that whatever the temperature might be on a given day during the winter, the ice seasons now tend to end around the same date they have throughout recorded history. That is critical information for those seeking to quiet the climate cultists. Don't listen to the dummies. Read the Ice Out dates, please. <laughs> listen to the dummies. I, you know, I think I should. <laughs> I, you know, yesterday I said no, and today I'm saying yes. I, I'm a bit perplexed. Yes. And I also think you but should. But that's White Bear, Minnetonka. Not that we're not doing every mud hole in town. And I also think it's important, especially on <laughs> April 1st, <laughs> when um, Aquaside is back into the mix. Well, they uh, are. Yes, they well, are. I guess we're doing So we are 100% now. doing the, the, the records. <laughs> uh, f- fellas. Yes, sir. Um, I was thinking of Finland. Finlayson is south of Duluth, <laughs> just just off of I thirty five. Oh, close enough, <laughs> not even close. You might so, have a double secret emergency here. Sorry oh, about that. Oh. Here are the ice house. Uh, what's today? March fifteenth. Yes. Sir. Well, there's nothing, of course, today, and uh, the earliest remains that non winter of eighteen seventy seven and seventy eight when Minnetonka went out on March. 11. We won't have a, uh, there's a couple of, coming up on April 1st. Here's a March 30. I'll have to consult but, this every day now. But I'm yeah. getting this from Bill Miller. They have officially declared today Minnetonka is out. They did that uh, the was, other day. No, yeah. well, I'm seeing it. What's the date on Tuesday, the email? Two days ago. It was? I'll read yeah, the date was, on the email. Was, yeah. Oh, thanks, Bill. Uh huh. There's a mud lake uh, by Finless and Joe. Yeah, that's a it's a pretty popular. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. So Kamala Harris was in town yesterday, which I knew, but then doubly experienced leaving the KSTP broadcast headquarters on University Avenue uh, to discover that, good lord, what a police presence! They shut down like rail. Everything was shut down. University uh, that Planned Parenthood where she performed an abortion. She and Walls performed an abortion, I think, just to show how easy were, it is, just to how, how important it is for your health. And they held up the baby and oh. said, well, this one's done. Oh and then uh, they had uh, freeways blocked and uh, everything. It was just amazing. Yeah. Do we have any? Uh, I'm looking as we speak. <laughs> Vandalia Street, St. Paul. Yeah, eastbound 94 was closed. Oh, my God. But but that is uh, so offensive. Well, I don't care. It's too bad. Yeah, that's why I ignored it. Yeah, <laughs> one of them held the leg. Oh, they each brought, right, we go. They had each the brought a vice grip. And oh, uh, they, Joe, you yeah. gotta stop. No, that's that's how they do it. And then they were very <laughs> gleeful about it and said, "Isn't this happy that we're providing this health care?" That's what gets me is all the fancy names they have for it. It's still you're. you're you're killing it's a baby. Re- it's reproductive health care. Yeah, it's your reproductive rights. Walls, but, you know, he let's... took off his sport coat and said, do we have any hot towels? And then uh, Kamala weighed in and she had her hands up in the air like a surgeon. And they went in there and bang, bang, boom, they got one. 
call it whatever you want, but you know, uh, if you're pro or con or whatever, it's still it's killing a baby. And then she went to uh, somebody's house and had a cocktail. So and then yeah, whose house did she go to? I don't know. No, she went to a school. I no, have... she went to a private event. No, she went to so, St. Paul to a school oh, and watched yeah. and watched softball practice. Yeah, but then I think she had the cocktail. Oh, somewhere. okay, got yeah. it. So what do you make of the theory that all this attention to abortion and um, the rights and all of that is just a distraction from the issues that really matter? It's a it's part of the Democratic platform They're there. They want to ensure this reproductive health. We have people in the legislature who want e to use your money to uh, to uh, welcome people here for that. Yeah. What did you find? Uh, I have. Three. I don't think she was terribly misspoken yesterday i have she? three and a half minutes courtesy of msnbc while she was at the clinic in st is Paul. there any do you have any dialogue from when they were performing the abortion that i'm not sure all right i'm not sure but right. here is uh miss harris the vice president please do understand that when we talk about a clinic such as this it is absolutely about health care and reproductive health care sure. so everyone get ready for the language uterus she had her hand in her. She had her hand that in part of the body needs a lot of medical care from time to time. <laughs> Issues like fibroids. We can handle this. Breast cancer screening. She has no idea what she somebody handed her. Contraceptive care. That is the kind of work that happens here. In addition, of course, to abortion care. Sure. You have a vice president who already is history making. Mm -hmm. Abortion care. That's oxymoronic. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't work. But my point is here, we're discussing this instead of discussing issues that really should be concerning the country. Well, we're also discussing it because the fool was here. She was literally 400 yards from here. Whatever. And she's brought and she came here and brought this up and is doing this in order to distract us as a nation from issues that really truly matter. Go ahead, aren't John. We, I'm sorry. Are we discussing this because of a Supreme Court decision last year? And and to say that it's not an issue, I think you're discounting a good, oh, I don't know, 70% of the population that is concerned about it one way or the other. It's a big issue. It's a oh, big it's a, issue. Well, I, and it cost Republicans last time. The Supreme Court decision did. Maybe it's, and it may again. Who knows? May, it's just me wanting to not talk about this let's talk about something that really matters that's I I guess, coming from a personal point of view All it's right. just i wish both sh sides would just shut up about it and <laughs> let's talk about some things that actually matter too let's uh, talk about uber and lyft legit they're leaving minneapolis that's their current threat they'll leave may 1st now here's what's again somewhat similar to duluth public officials uh, puzzled by a woman buying up property on Park Point, and they're, they're wondering, why are we left out of this? Here's the city council in Minneapolis, none of whom have ever worked, uh, none of whom have ever met a payroll, none of whom understand the market, don't care about it. They've determined what Uber, uh, Uber and Lyft drivers should be paid. And back at corporate headquarters, Uber and Lyft say, well, no, no, that's not the way this works. And so now uh, <clears throat> Fry uh, vetoed the city council resolution to increase Uber and Lyft's pay uh, for no other reason than they think they should. They don't understand it. They don't have any knowledge of business, none whatsoever. And then, so Fry vetoed it, trying to preserve Uber and Lyft for to the town. And then the city council with the exception of three members, one of whom was Latricia Vita, uh, the other was Linda Pulse, Pulse, whatever her name is. And, and, and so the, the council overrode Fry's veto. They're, they're doubling down and saying, no, no, we're going to pay. They're all Somali drivers, basically. They wouldn't have done this if they were white drivers. Let's just be candid. Let's just call it like we see it. So, so now what? Well, Uber and Lyft essentially displaced, you know, a century old cab system. Right. There aren't any cabs. There's about three cabs. Well, there still are cabs, but it's a much more difficult process to order a cab. Well, whatever. 
Yeah, the kids have these Uber Lyft apps on their phone. Right. Now, we were talking before the show, uh, another point that uh, the city council wouldn't consider, although they should have, is Uber and Lyft have taken a lot of drunk drivers off the road. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have taken a lot of drunk drivers off the road. I'll hand it to the kids, the 20-year-olds. They're calling Uber and Lyft rather than driving. In fact, a lot of Good places. Good for them. A lot of places, including the one that I used to bartend at, had a setup where kids could sit there and wait during the winter time, of course. Yeah. So they could wait for their ride share. But the city council, being hectored by the driver's constituency, determined that, well, you you guys obviously aren't getting paid enough, so let, we'll do something about it. They They had no business doing anything about it. And now you've got a complete ruined situation in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have many cabs, and you're not going to have Uber and Lyft. And this comes at a time when they actually they're they're so deluded, they're they're thinking they're bringing downtown Minneapolis back, back from the ruins of the pandemic, back from the summer of riots, back from this and that. And now you have no transportation. The, and the other aspect of this with Uber and Lyft is that there are so many people mm -hmm. that rely on that for daily transportation, whether it's to and from work or the grocery store or what have you, because they don't want to get on light rail because of so, safety. Is Uber and Lyft as a company leaving? Because I'm thinking there's a lot of drivers that would still rather just be out there hauling fares around. Yeah, but they're Uber and Lyft will leave. So what also is leaving is all of the corporate uh, accoutrements, the apps and the the uh, convenience, everything. And then the drivers are losing their health insurance. Certified and their, vehicles they're, they have. They're losing everything. So uh, what? here's what the city council doesn't understand, and this would be true the closer you get to the country's tallest buildings where the Mysterians have ruined the United States. And I don't mean that lightly. They have ruined it. Uber and Lyft, is, they're, they're in business to make money, right? So they have an office building full of people mm -hmm. who crunch numbers. And they think, you know, at 59 cents a mile, we can do this. And then a buck 10 over 50. They come up with all these formulas in order to make money. The city council is not capable of that, nor have they done that. Nor should they. That's not their business. That's Uber and Lyft's business. And Uber and Lyft come up with the formula that made them successful. They were a big success in this country. They had a big, they had a, a window of success that you saw every every kid I used to have, for example, uh, had an Uber and Lyft app. Hey, I'll just take Uber. Yep. It worked for them. And now these morons, and they are morons. The city, Robin Wansley has no more idea how a, a dollar works than the man in the moon. And they've now ruined it. They've ruined it. So now what are they going to do? you got a city that you want buzzing with nightlife. You want activity down there. You, have, you want people getting to ball games and the bars and the restaurants. And now you've taken all of that off the table. Fry was smart enough to know that. Fry, uh, if, if he had it to do over again, Fry might either not want to be mayor or at least be the mayor uh, reflecting a different party. And because he's he can't swim with these people. They're idiots. And not to give him a lot of credit, but remember a year ago, Walls also did the same thing. Remember was that when he was performing abortions? No, no a year ago, this this wage increase oh, for yeah. rideshare came up, well, and he, Walls said you can't do He's a fourth grade social studies teacher. He doesn't know anything about capitalism. He doesn't know anything about the marketplace. He doesn't know anything about anything. And neither does the city council. And there you have it, Minneapolis. You not only got what you voted for, you're not going to have a ghost town when it comes to transportation. Now, Uber and Lyft have that threat to work with. This isn't over. You know, May 1st is still, what, six weeks away. Yeah. So you keep rooting for cooler heads to prevail. There are no cooler heads on the city council. They're morons. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. So the guys that got their drivers that got their raises are going to be out of a job. So what good did it do the city council to force Uber and Lyft to pay raises that they will not pay for a group of employees who no longer have a job? And you don't ride the bus. But if I did, uh, uh, make sure I hear that horn. And here's a picture of all of these 
equally stupid people, rideshare drivers and supporters, cheering. Yep. Well, you're going to be walking, you morons. It's over. But that's what happens when you let Mysterians think they can tinker with how this works. They don't know how it works. They spent no time understanding how it works. They don't sit in a corporate cubicle and crunch 59 cents versus 43 cents. They don't know what to do. They're, they're in over their heads, and now you've ruined transportation in Minneapolis. Mm. So you have six weeks to figure out how to get back down on your knees and beg Uber and Lyft not to leave. So I, I don't know where this stands right now, except that's where it stands. You have six weeks to remedy the meddling you had no business involving yourself in. Well, I can tell you what the reaction will be. It'll be framed by both the people that made this decision and the idiot voters in Minneapolis. Well, look at the greedy billionaire corporation. Look at what they're choosing to do. No, that's not how business works, ladies and gentlemen. Uber and Lyft, when it came to the world of taxi cabs, apparently was just a better mousetrap. Yes. They just figured out a better mousetrap. And it was it was well received. Am I correct in that in the Twin Cities? Well yes. received. Both programs. I know so many young people who use it. Uh, I've used it. I have too. And if and you plan uh, right, it's it's so convenient. And now they've because they're morons and they, they look up the word. They are. They're really dumb people when it comes to this. They have no business doing this and they've ruined it. So what? now they have six weeks to unruin it. Also, take it one step further. They, they promote not owning a car, right? Usually. <laughs> yes. And this is this is what they would use. <laughs> right. Or people right. that don't own a car would use. We don't want you to drive. We think the earth is being ruined by your van. We want you to take Uber and Lyft. But wait a minute. We just ruined Uber and Lyft because we're telling these two corporations <laughs> what they must pay their people. So oh, instead of that, take light rail. Oh, you can't because you might get stabbed. But here's the other answer. If an Uber and Lyft driver didn't like the arrangements, nobody forced them to work for Uber and Lyft. Right. If you needed more money, then you should seek other employment. But we're seeing a sea change here. It's part of the mystery. Well, actually, actually a very significant part of the mystery where you will have an increasing effort by these elected officials who are poorly educated and have no uh, no experience whatsoever in what we would call the real world, they are going to increasingly try to uh, interject themselves into these kinds of questions, uh, thus transforming capitalism into some sort of quasi-collectivism or socialism that they think they can bring about. You're you're seeing it in Duluth, not not anywhere near this, but you're seeing it in Duluth in the amusing way that the city officials of Duluth are just still scratching their heads, wondering why aren't they involved in this gal uh, Cargill buying, <laughs> buying up Park Point, and they don't know what, what the hell's going on here. How can that be? Well, it can be because we still have enough of the rules and regulations left that this is allowed. What the city council, it's tantamount to the city council saying, we're not going to allow Uber and Lyft to determine what they should pay their employees. We'll determine it. Well, you you screwed it up because you don't know what you're doing. And now what are you going to do? We know what I'm going to do. What are you going to do? Take a break. After I tell you about our friends at